Well, you might be wondering, what am I doing bashing off the road before the show's even started? Well, if you look carefully in front of us, we have found what looks to be two Inkahuma lionesses searching for the rest of the pride. We saw tracks and uh, probably only followed the tracks for about 40 or 50 meters before we saw the two lioness. My name is Brent Leo Smith, and I have the one, the only, Batman on camera with me today. And very exciting to have lioness on the property. It looks like they're searching for the rest of the pride, and that they might have lost them with all the lion shenanigans going on at the moment. What has that female to the left seen? Look at her body language. Has she seen another lion, or has she seen something to eat? We can't really tell from where we are. What could it be? Yeah, what sounds like elephants not too far away breaking branches. That's definitely not what's causing her to start stalking. As I say, could be other lions. You never know. They could be a poor unsuspecting standwalk. Oh, uh, body language is still on the stalk. We can't make out anything. Ah, it's an Impala Ram, Craig. So if you come to the second lioness and uh, go a little bit to the right. There. I saw an Impala. There we go. You can just see them moving through the bush there. Now, they are both quite hungry. And, of course, as I said, rutting season is a time for lions to take advantage of the madness that goes through the Impala's mind. Now, sorry, I've just got to speak to Tax on the radio quickly. Tax, I come down Philemont and then we're just upstream uh, a little bit from Philemont's dip if you head on the northern side of the road. Okay. We're going to keep quiet for a while. I'm just going to move the car slightly, but we are going to get um, our friends from all over the world wide web to join us. So I'm going to be silent for a second. bush where we've got two lionesses busy stalking an impala. We can't see the impala now. It's behind the thickets. Um, excuse me for a second. I'm just being on the game drive radio. Tax the stalking an impala. So I'm just talking to one of the other game drive vehicles who's also coming to enjoy these lions on the move. And lions are often very patient in the hunt. As you can see, she's sitting down, but they haven't started snorting the impala. There we go. There's the second lioness. Oh, dear. I think that impala has spotted them and dashed off by their body language. Well, let's get a closer look. Tax, they are directly to your south, east, southwest, sorry. Sorry, just chatting on the game. My name's Brent, by the way. I've got my good friend Craig on camera. And uh, let's get you a closer look of at these lions. Now, as I said, a lot of lion hunts don't end successfully. They're only successful about 12% of the time. And the prey species out here have a huge array of defenses from good hearing, good eyesight, good, good smell, to incredible speed, jumping ability to avoid these big cats. Of course, if they had a very high success rate, there'd be no impala left for any of them to eat. Now, 
Oh, there we go. Uh, yes, the Jersey Lady. It is always very exciting to see lions. And there they are. Well, there she is. Now, no, it looks to be members of our favorite pride of lions. It is called the Kahuma Pride. And uh, there are normally five adult lionesses and uh, six sub-adults. But there has been a huge turmoil in the lion dynamics in our area with three new young males moving in and causing all sorts of havoc. So I heard a lot of lion roaring and audio last night which could have caused these lions to split off from their pride to try avoid those marauding young boys. Those boys are about five years old now. Uh, the dominant males that were here are busy trying to take over another pride to the south of us, leaving this pride unprotected from the marauding males from the north. Now, up until they spotted that Impala, it looks like they've been searching uh, for the rest of the pride. They've had their noses to the ground. They've been sniffing, sniffing, sniffing as they go. Carol, the males that these lions want to be around at the moment are not, but the males they don't want to be around are. So they're busy trying to avoid the new males, and uh, I think they might have had a run-in with the new males last night. That's why the pride has been split. There was a lot of lion audio throughout the night. And we're going to flop down into the grass. That's very common lion behavior. Move for 20 minutes, sleep for an hour. Move for five minutes, sleep for two hours. Oh, there are those big teeth and a little a little yawn. Now, we're going to stick with these lions for the rest of the morning. Uh, remember, if you want to continue following, just type in Safari Live on your search engine and you will find us. We're going to be live for another oh, nearly three hours following all sorts of different wi wonderful wildlife here in Africa. But from myself, Brent, and my cameraman, Craig, we'll see you later. Okay, well, that Impala didn't snort, so he might have just run off because of the rutting season. They run around like madmen, and the lions decided it probably wasn't worth their while to try and follow him. Now, I haven't had, actually had a good look at the lionesses just yet, but to see exactly who's who in the zoo. nosed lioness as we call her uh, the second oldest female and I'm not sure who the other is I haven't had a good look yet okay well I'm going to sit here with the lions to see what they get up to next in the meantime let's see and send you over to Rolf to see if he's been able to find the gorgeous Tandy Yes, well, if it's not his lucky jacket, it's certainly his puffy jacket. It makes him look double the size. Now, we're still with the lovely ladies here. They haven't quite given us a good look yet. And uh, I think they're going to be up on the move shortly. They're sniffing the air. I definitely think they are looking for the rest of the pride. Can anyone recognize which in Linus this is? Should I say... There we go, some greeting. I think we could have the, the oldest female, and that's the light-colored one on the left, and then the ridge-nosed female on the right. As I say, in this long grass, it's difficult to get an idea on the individual lionesses. Now, one thing that could be a little bit worrying is if they continue on this line 
I might head straight to where Tandy and Lalamba have that kill in the tree. Let's hope the leopards are wide awake this morning. But at the moment, a little peaceful aloe grooming session in the long grass. viewer, lions don't have that much planning that they would send out scouts ahead to recon the hunt. They are very much by sight predators or by sound predators. So they have to see something or hear something to pique their interest and then all members of, adult members of the pride will hunt. Uh, they, they definitely don't send out a reconnaissance team to survey what's ahead. As I say, at the moment, our line dynamics are in a bit of a shambles with those three new males coming in. And uh, the Nkoma and Sticks Pride are basically doing their best to avoid those three Evoker boys at the moment. We, we're pretty sure he, the Evokers have killed one uh, Nkoma so far, which was that youngest, the youngest cub, who's, if I remember correctly, about six months old, has been killed by the Evoker male so far. So where the rest of the pride are now is anybody's guess, and it looked like these two females were looking for them. Now, oh, flat, flat. Now, Anna, there's a very good reason why the Birmingham boys haven't come back to defend their ladies. It's because they've got new ladies and more ladies. So the area then at the moment, there's bigger prides, more prides, uh, lots of buffalo at the moment around the Sand River. So they're very busy trying to mate and control all the females down in the south. But there's, there's the risk reward factor for coming back up here is 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 not in their interest. So the Majinga lions have died, and and that leaves a huge swathe of the central Sabi sands without any male lions, and lots of females without uh, without males to 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 consort with. So I think they're focusing on taking over those bigger prides that are uh, in the in the south. It looks like they might have moved quite far overnight and they're stopping for a quick snooze, but it is quite cool this morning, so they might get up and on the move again. Now, if they decide for, to snooze for too long, I might go look for the rest of the pride, see if we can find them. There's a possibility that they could be on Juma as well, scattered around somewhere. Because of the presence of the evoker males, Cobalt, it is going to be a little bit more difficult for these ladies to find the rest of the pride. So uh, normally they would contact, call and roar, and they'd be able to find the rest of the pride with, with, with ease. But now they're going to have to probably track them by scent and, and maybe soft contact calls only. Because if they started roaring or making a noise, it would attract the attention of those male lions who would come charging in. So it is more difficult when they're trying to avoid male lions to find the rest of the pride than it would be uh, when they have stable males in an area. But for the moment, they are having a good sleep in the grass. Okay. If they got caught by the evoker males and they had no choice, yes, then the adults would stand up to the evoker males. But survival is ingrained in these animals. So generally, first option is to flee. Get away from the males. The males are that much bigger and that much stronger than a lioness that they, they would want to get away. If they had no choice, yes, they would fight. 
And it doesn't always end well for lionesses who stand to fight with the males, because, as we saw, when the Birminghams took over, uh, they do kill lionesses during those uh, during new male war coalition takeovers. I'm just trying to think where the rest of the pride might be. These tracks came straight down via tele-access. Uh, we, we saw them just as we got to the edge of quarantine, so we didn't have to track very far today. They are heading sort of southeast at the moment, or that has been their general direction since we've been with them, until they've obviously flopped down in the grass now. But the rest of the pride could very easily be in the western sections of Juma, or even the southern sections of Juma. options here to see if we should stay or go. Should we go look for the rest of the pride? I'm worried that if these guys move, some, we might lose them. Uh, so while I do that, let's go see how Rolf's search for the elusive Tandy is going. Okay guys, welcome back. I just got to talk to Tax, sorry, for a second. I negative Nyama still in the tree, but he said he couldn't see us. Maybe check from Jigga Jigga side at the Mati there. So, Tax wants to go look for Tandi, so I was just giving him an update. But we're still with these very lazy lions in the grass, not doing much. Now, I've heard a vehicle has headed off towards the west to see if they can find any other side of the Inkumas. I'm going to try and move around to the other side of these lazy lions. Okay, let's go this way. Oof, this little monkey oranges make so much noise when you drive over them. will move through vast areas a uh, song of rain but lionesses don't have that luxury because they can't really move to another area because they are going to run into other lionesses so they'd have to fight with them for their territory so they, they have to really hang around and and while these the evokers are taking control of the north so to speak they will and sort of do this ducking and diving and trying to avoid at all costs uh, till till everything settles down, till either all those sub-adults are, are dead, killed by the evokers, um, or uh, the Birmingham boys come back, but as I say, I don't think that's very likely at the moment. Well, I don't think it's much better of a view from over here. It's slightly better. The grass is quite long. As I say, they could have walked from very far. I know the Nkumas have been deep in the west. Douglas, the, some of the sub adults, well, the oldest of the sub adults need to get about a year, maybe even a year and a half older to be safe from the evokers. And it's normally about three years old that the. the the females will become adults and, and therefore breeding potential for the males. For the young male, there's no age that he will ever be safe from the focus. Unfortunately, that's the way it goes with male lions. Uh, 
I'm just listening carefully. You never know where the other lions might pop up from. Oh, let's hope for Tandy and Tlalamba's sake that these lions don't head s straight in the direction they have been because that would take them directly to where their kill is. And I don't think they'd be able to get the kill out of the tree, but they might try. It is a wonderfully still morning at the moment, barely a breeze. Now, lion territories vary from where you are in Africa, Gemma, uh, depending on all sorts of different things such as uh, food prey availability uh, or prey density. Uh, other lion density. So, for example, the lion, a, li a lion pride, so made up of the females and youngsters, uh, probably need between eight and 10,000 hectares, so 22,000 acres in this area. Where there is in the Mara, they're much, much smaller. Uh, they're probably two to 3,000 hectares for a, a, a lion pride. Uh, males here, territory of about or over 10,000 hectares, sometimes as much as 15,000 hectares, encompassing multiple prides. And the Mara, again, much smaller uh, due to prey density. So there's there's no exact answer. And if you take lions that live out in the desert areas, their, their, pride, their, their territories are massive. Uh, one pride can have 30,000, 40,000 hectares, and a male... 50,000 hectares, and that can only encompass two prides. So it, it all depends on, on, on prey density. Available food dictates the number and the size of the, the pride's territory. Now, of course, they have core areas of their territory, um, and then their greater home range. And they might move into when, when times are tough, when they're not finding enough food in the core area. Okay, well, I'm going to wait here a little bit longer. In the meantime, I'm going to send you back to Rolf to see where he's off to next. Well, there's a Franklin alarm calling in the little river system just to the south of us. And their heads have popped up briefly. And so I'm not 100% sure that this is... In coma, ladies. Well, as I say, the line dynamics at the moment are completely up in the air. And the original reason I thought it was definitely in coma is they were sent marking on quarantine when I found them this morning. But you never know, this could be. Torchwood could be Talamati. So uh, it's definitely not sticks that we can be certain of. difficult to tell the difference in lion pride zep than it is in uh, in in leopards and and, and and certainly other other big cats you look for distinguishing markings on the ears on the face uh, certain researchers will use whisker spots and uh, also coloration on the inside of the mouth. Some of them have uh, sort of blotches on their gums that are in dark colors. When they, they yawn, you can see them. Uh, but normally, when you spend a lot of time with a certain lion pride, you still you do start to notice certain things. But as I said, I, 
I'm not 100% sure, and I've spent a lot of time with the Nkuhumas over the years, that this is Nkuhuma Lions. Uh, Tortured Pride, I don't know very well at all. Uh, I haven't spent, I think I've seen them once. And Talamatis, I've seen once. So, it can be a little bit confusing sometimes, especially now where you've got this absolute pandemonium being caused by, by male lions coming in. And when I'm talking about whisker spots, I'm just trying to... If I can hear those elephants where James is breaking branches... See if I've got a decent just trying to see if I've got a decent I don't think I've got an, a, a lion oh, there we go That'll, no that one's full of blood <laughs> but I suppose it will work um, pangolin there is not that much variation in, in lion coats of course unless you get a, a, a leucistic white lion but I mean they're all tawny-ish and they're obviously some paler some darker but not too much variation now when I'm talking about whisker spots <laughs> sorry I don't have the greatest photo around this one's full of blood I've zoomed in a bit there um, this is, these are the whisker spots here. So those are unique to each individual lioness. But again, it's much easier to take a photograph and sit and look carefully. But when, you, when you're out in the field like we are all the time, sometimes that isn't possible. As you can see, heads are down, flat in the grass, even with binoculars. Uh, and even with this incredible zoom on the camera, we, we're going to struggle to see the whisker spots properly through the grass. It's a mystery. I'm just trying to think if I've heard of any random prides of lions in the last while. I haven't. But as I say, with with the evokers chasing everyone up and down and around, you you could have lions coming in from the Manyaneti. So it'd be very interesting to backtrack these lions, see whether they came from the north or the or the west or the south. Well, they didn't come from the south, but from the north or the west or the east. Whether they came from Buffalo Manuleti side or they came from Sibambili side. I just looked so comfortable on quarantine scent marking that I thought, surely it must be the Nkumas. Trying to decide. Why don't you guys decide for me? Should I go try to see where these lions have come from? It doesn't look like they're going to move much at all uh, from now on. And uh, while we do that, and you decide whether we should stay or go, hashtags for live. Let's send you back to James and the Ellies. Done. I've done some research on them, and uh, I've got hold of some guys in the west and whatnot. The whole Inkuuma pride is on the London Lozies boundary, so these are not Inkuuma lions. Uh, Taxon just said the tracks are coming in from around Sydney's, so they are possibly uh, Talamati lions or possibly Torchwood lions. And having only seen those pride once, it's going to be quite difficult to tell. So, unknown pride for now. Okay, we're going to be doing a short little broadcast. I'm going to be quiet while they do their soundy thingies.
Okay. Well, we're going to leave these lionesses for now and uh, see what else we can find. But we'll probably come back and check on them later in the drive. So let's go see what else we can find.